The wind howled outside, and the snow fell relentlessly, blanketing the small, isolated house in a thick layer of white. I sat alone in my dimly lit living room, my family away on vacation. The old house creaked and groaned in the frigid night, the sounds echoing through the empty rooms. It was supposed to be a peaceful weekend of solitude, a chance to relax and unwind in the quiet of our family home. But as the storm raged outside, an eerie unease settled over me, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I was not truly alone. I tried to convince myself that the strange noises were merely the consequences of the tempestuous weather, creaking floorboards and howling wind. But deep down, I knew there was something different about these sounds, something unsettling that crawled under my skin. It started as a subtle rustling, like the faint whisper of a breeze through the trees. I strained my ears to listen, dismissing it as a trick of my imagination. But as the night wore on, the whispers grew more pronounced, more tangible. They were not mere sounds, they were words, carried on the icy breath of the storm. With a growing sense of dread, I abandoned the warmth of my armchair and ventured into the dimly lit corridors of the house. The shadows seemed to dance and flicker, mocking my fear. I clutched a fireplace poker, my only defense against the unseen intruder who had invaded my solitude. The whispers guided me, leading me through the labyrinthine corridors as if taunting my feeble attempts to unravel their mystery. They seemed to emanate from the very walls themselves, as if the house held secrets it was reluctant to share. I moved cautiously, my heart pounding with each step, my breath misting in the frigid air. It was as if the house itself was alive, its time-worn structure concealing ancient tales of the past. As I turned a corner, the whispers coalesced into distinct words, their meanings unclear, but filled with a sense of urgency. I strained to understand, my mind racing to decipher their cryptic message. And then, in the dim light of a forgotten hallway, I saw it, a shadowy figure, indistinct and fleeting, standing at the end of the corridor. My blood turned to ice as I watched it, my mind struggling to comprehend what I was witnessing. The figure seemed to beckon, its form shifting and contorting in the darkness. Panic surged and I clutched the fireplace poker tighter, my knuckles white with fear. I wanted to flee, to escape the grip of the unseen intruder, but an inexplicable curiosity rooted me in place. As I took a hesitant step forward, the figure retreated, vanishing into the inky blackness. The whispers faded, leaving behind an oppressive silence. I was alone once more, with only the echo of my own racing heart to fill the void. I returned to the dimly lit living room, my mind a whirlwind of confusion and fear. The storm outside continued its relentless assault, the wind howling through the windows like a mournful lament. I sat in the darkness, my senses on high alert, haunted by the knowledge that I was not alone in the house. The night stretched on and sleep remained elusive. The whispers lingered in the air, a haunting reminder of the unseen intruder who had invaded my solitude. As the hours passed, I couldn't help but wonder, was it a product of my imagination, a trick of the storm or something far more sinister? I knew that the answers lay hidden within the ancient walls of the house waiting to be uncovered. But as the first rays of dawn broke over the snow-covered landscape, I couldn't help but fear that I had embarked on a journey into darkness, one that would reveal truths too chilling to comprehend. Morning broke, casting pale light upon the snow-covered landscape. I stood in my kitchen, weary from a sleepless night, clutching a steaming cup of coffee. The storm had finally subsided, leaving behind an eerie silence that hung in the air like a heavy shroud. I gazed out of the window, watching as the first light of day transformed the world outside. The thick blanket of snow shimmered, pristine and untouched, a stark contrast to the chaos that had unfolded within the walls of the house. But as my eyes scanned the snowy canvas, something caught my attention. A series of footprints leading from the back door of the house and continuing toward the kitchen window. I frowned, the cup of coffee slipping from my trembling hand and shattering on the floor. My heart pounded like a drum. 
the realization hitting me with chilling clarity. I had not been alone in the house during the night, and whatever had left those tracks was still inside. Panic surged through my veins as I turned to face the empty room, the whispering voices of the night echoing in my ears. The footprints in the snow were undeniable proof of an intruder, a living, breathing presence that had violated the sanctity of my home. I felt a cold sweat bead on my forehead as I approached the window, my breath misting the glass. The tracks were perplexing. They led directly from the back door, as if someone had entered the house from the cold darkness outside. But what sent a chill down my spine was the fact that the footprints only went in one direction, toward the kitchen window. There were no tracks leading away from it. A wave of dread washed over me, and I felt an overwhelming urge to flee, to escape the nightmare that had become my reality. But I knew that I couldn't leave without confronting the truth, without understanding who or what had infiltrated my home in the dead of night. With cautious steps, I followed the tracks backward, retracing the intruder's path. The footprints were clear and defined, a haunting reminder that I was not alone in this seemingly deserted house. The trail led through the living room, where I had spent the long, restless night. The whispers that had tormented me seemed to grow louder, their words now tinged with a mocking tone. It was as if the unseen intruder reveled in my fear, in my growing desperation to uncover the truth. As I approached the doorway that led to the corridor, I saw something that made my blood run cold. A trail of melted snow leading from the footprints and disappearing into the living room. It was as though the intruder had left a chilling calling card, a reminder that it had been here, watching, waiting. With trembling hands, I continued to follow the trail, my heart pounding with each step. The corridor stretched out before me, its shadowy depths concealing the secrets of the night. The voices whispered and taunted, their presence an ever-present reminder of the darkness that lurked within. The trail of melted snow ended abruptly at the entrance to the kitchen, as if the intruder had simply vanished into thin air. I stood there, my mind racing, my senses on high alert, trying to make sense of the inexplicable. It was then that the realization struck me like a bolt of lightning. The intruder had not left through the back door or any other exit. It had vanished right here in the kitchen, beneath the very window through which it had entered. I felt a surge of panic rise within me, the whispering voices reaching a fevered pitch. The air seemed to grow colder, as if the house itself were closing in on me. I was trapped, alone with the enigma of the footprints in the snow and the malevolent presence that had left them. As I stood there, frozen in fear and uncertainty, I couldn't help but wonder if the intruder had ever truly been here at all. Was it a figment of my imagination, a manifestation of my own paranoia, or had I truly shared my home with something that defied explanation? The hours passed in a haze of fear and confusion. The footprints in the snow becoming a haunting enigma that refused to be solved. The voices persisted, their words a relentless torment, driving me to the brink of madness. And then, as the day gave way to night once more, I made a decision. I could no longer remain in the house, trapped by the unseen intruder, and the inexplicable events that had transpired. With a heavy heart and a mind clouded by fear, I gathered my belongings and fled into the unforgiving cold of the snowy night. I left behind the footprints in the snow, the whispers in the darkness, and the chilling mystery that had invaded my life. As I ventured out into the storm, I couldn't help but wonder if I would ever find answers, or if the truth would forever remain an elusive, haunting presence in the recesses of my mind. The house, with its secrets and its eerie silence, receded into the distance, a dark silhouette against the white expanse of snow. And as I walked away, I couldn't escape the feeling that I had left behind more than just footprints in the snow. I had left behind a part of my own sanity, forever lost in the chilling depths of that fateful night. The forest had always been a place of wonder during the day, a sanctuary where sunlight filtered through the leaves and birdsong filled the air.
But as the sun dipped below the horizon and the inky cloak of night descended, the forest took on a sinister transformation. A group of four campers, Alex, Sarah, Mike, and Emily, had ventured deep into the woods to escape the noise and stress of the modern world. They had set up their campsite beneath a dense canopy of trees, their tents forming a small circle around a crackling campfire. The stars above shimmered like diamonds in the moonless sky, casting eerie shadows that danced upon the forest floor. As the campfire's warm glow flickered and waned, the campers settled into their sleeping bags. The forest's nocturnal chorus of chirping crickets and rustling leaves serving as their lullaby. The peacefulness of the wilderness enveloped them, and they soon drifted into an uneasy slumber. It was in the darkest hours of the night when the first scream shattered the silence. It was a high-pitched, chilling cry that seemed to reverberate through the very trees themselves. Startled and disoriented, the campers shot upright in their sleeping bags, their eyes wide with fear. What was that? Sarah whispered, her voice trembling. Alex, the group's self-proclaimed adventurer and de facto leader, strained his ears in the direction of the scream. It sounded like a woman, he said, his brow furrowed. But we're miles away from civilization. There shouldn't be anyone else out here. The scream came again, closer this time, as if it were drawing nearer with each passing moment. It was a haunting sound, filled with pain and desperation, and it sent shivers down their spines. Mike, the skeptic of the group, scoffed nervously. It's probably just some animal, guys. A fox or a mountain lion, maybe. But Emily's face had drained of color, and she clung to her husband, Mike, with a trembling hand. That didn't sound like any animal I've ever heard. It was like, like a cry for help. As if in response to her words, the scream came once more, so close that it seemed to emanate from the very edge of their campsite. It was a harrowing, gut, wrenching sound that filled the night air. Without a word, Alex grabbed a flashlight and unzipped the tent, his heart pounding as he stepped out into the darkness. The others followed suit, their anxiety mounting with each step. They shone their flashlights into the surrounding forest, the beams cutting through the blackness like knives. The woods were eerily silent, as if the very trees were holding their breath, waiting for the next scream. And then it came, a blood-curdling cry that seemed to encircle them, as if it were coming from all directions at once. Panic set in, and the campers frantically scanned the forest, trying to locate the source of the haunting sound. But there was nothing, no sign of movement, no glimpse of a person or creature. It was as if the scream itself had no origin, as if it were a spectral presence haunting the forest. Sarah clutched her chest, her eyes wide with terror. We need to get out of here, now. As if on cue, the scream came again, impossibly loud and agonizingly close. With a collective surge of fear, the campers abandoned their gear and fled deeper into the woods, the haunting echoes of the nocturnal screams chasing them into the heart of the forest. They had no idea what they were running from or where they were running to. But one thing was certain. The forest held secrets darker than they could have ever imagined and the night was far from over. The chilling encounter with the nocturnal echoes had set the stage for an eerie and unsettling journey into the unknown. The forest swallowed them whole, its towering trees and inky shadows closing in as the haunting screams pursued them relentlessly. Panic and dread churned in their hearts as they stumbled blindly through the dense undergrowth, their flashlights cutting through the obscurity but revealing nothing more than the tangled foliage before them. The nocturnal echoes continued to reverberate through the woods, their eerie chorus filling the night. It was as if the very forest itself had come alive, a malevolent entity that sought to ensnare them in its sinister grasp. Alex, still the group's de facto leader, took the lead as they navigated the treacherous terrain his flashlight beam dancing wildly over the gnarled roots and looming tree trunks. His mind raced, trying to make sense of the inexplicable situation they found themselves in. We need to keep moving, he urged. 
his voice trembling with unease. We can't stay here. Whatever that thing is, it's still out there. Sarah clung to Mike, her breath coming in ragged gasps. But where are we going? We're lost, Alex. Lost in this godforsaken forest. Emily, her fear palpable, cast anxious glances behind them. And she was right. The screams were drawing nearer, their haunting resonance growing louder with each passing moment. It was as if the unseen pursuer was closing in, its relentless pursuit driving them deeper into the heart of the darkness. We can't outrun it, Mike said, his voice trembling. We have to find a place to hide. With a sinking feeling of dread, Alex nodded in agreement. He led the group off the beaten path, their flashlights sweeping over the tangled underbrush as they searched for some semblance of shelter. But the forest offered no respite. The gnarled trees closed in around them, the shadows growing thicker and the nocturnal echoes growing more oppressive. They stumbled upon a small, dilapidated shack, hidden among the trees, and took refuge inside. Their breaths came in ragged gasps as they huddled together in the cramped, dimly lit space. The eerie screams continued to echo outside, a relentless reminder of the malevolent force that pursued them. We have to stay quiet, Alex whispered, his eyes darting nervously to the shack's decrepit walls. Maybe it won't find us here. Minutes stretched into hours as they huddled in fearful silence, the haunting screams slowly receding into the distance. The forest seemed to hold its breath as if waiting for the next act of this nightmarish drama to unfold. But as the hours passed, the campers couldn't escape the unnerving feeling that they were not alone in the shack. Whispers, faint and indistinct, began to fill the air as if the very walls themselves held secrets. Sarah shivered, her voice trembling as she spoke. The others nodded, their faces pale with terror. The shack, it seemed, was not a place of refuge, but a prison of its own, a place where the forest's secrets whispered and the relentless pursuit continued. As the campers clung to one another in the suffocating darkness, they knew that their lives hung in the balance, caught between the haunting screams of the forest and the enigmatic whispers of the shack. The pursuit in the darkness was far from over, and the malevolent force that lurked in the shadows would stop at nothing to claim them. The Smith family had long yearned for a respite from the demands of city life, a break from the endless barrage of notifications and ceaseless hum of traffic. They sought solace in the embrace of nature, yearning for the simplicity and tranquility that only the wilderness could offer. And so, on a crisp autumn day, they loaded their camping gear into the car and embarked on a journey to a remote campground, nestled deep within the heart of an ancient forest. The campsite, known as Whispering Pines, was renowned for its breathtaking beauty and serene atmosphere. As the Smiths arrived, they were greeted by the lush, emerald foliage that stretched as far as the eye could see. Towering pines whispered secrets to the wind, and a clear, glistening stream meandered through the campsite. It was a place of unparalleled natural beauty, seemingly untouched by time. Unbeknownst to the Smiths, the campground carried with it a history steeped in mystery and foreboding. Whispers of an ancient curse had swirled through the annals of local folklore, passed down through generations. The curse, it was said, had been placed upon the land by vengeful spirits, forever binding the fate of those who dared to tread upon it. With eager hearts and an unwavering sense of adventure, the Smiths set up their campsite beneath the towering pines. The golden hues of the setting sun cast a warm, inviting glow over the wilderness, and a feeling of serenity settled upon them. Little did they know that as the sun dipped below the horizon, they were stepping into a realm where the line between reality and legend blurred. The ancient curse of whispering pines had laid dormant for centuries, but it would not remain silent for long. The family's quest for respite was about to become a chilling descent into a world where the whispering pines held secrets and the woods themselves harbored a malevolent force that hungered for their souls. 
As the sun dipped below the horizon and the canopy of whispering pines darkened, the Smith family gathered around their campfire. The crackling flames provided a feeble barrier against the encroaching night, their warmth a fragile comfort in the face of the growing unease that gripped them. It began with a subtle shift in the atmosphere, a subtle drop in temperature, and a whispering wind that rustled the leaves with a ghostly touch. The forest, once so inviting, seemed to hold its breath, as if aware of the ancient curse that lingered in the shadows. Sarah, the mother, shivered and wrapped her arms tightly around herself. Do you feel that? It's like the air just got colder. Her husband, Mark, glanced around the campsite, his eyes narrowing in suspicion. It's probably just a cold front moving in, nothing to worry about. But their daughter, Lily, had already picked up on the disquieting shift in the woods. Her young eyes darted nervously from tree to tree, as if searching for something that remained just beyond her vision. Mom, Dad, did you hear that? Lily whispered, her voice trembling. I heard something in the woods, like... Like whispers. Emily, the elder daughter, scoffed. Come on, Lily, don't be silly. It's just the wind. But Lily's fear was not unfounded. As the night deepened, the whispers grew more pronounced their spectral voices murmuring unintelligible words that seemed to emanate from the very trees themselves. It was a haunting chorus, carried on the wind, and it sent shivers down their spines. And then, the shadows came, shifting, undulating forms that moved with a malevolent intent. They slithered through the underbrush and danced among the trees, their movements eerily coordinated. The smiths watched in horror as the shadows drew closer to their campsite, their outlines growing more distinct. The campfire's feeble light cast long, wavering shadows of its own, and the boundary between reality and nightmare blurred. The whispers and the shadows converged, creating an atmosphere of profound dread. Something's not right, Mark muttered, his voice quivering. But before they could make their escape, the shadows coalesced into a nightmarish figure, an entity that seemed to defy the laws of nature. It stood at the edge of their campsite, its form a grotesque parody of the human shape. Lily's eyes widened with terror as she pointed toward the figure. Look, it's right there. The family watched in paralyzed horror as the entity loomed closer. Its presence suffocating. It emitted an eerie, guttural sound that bore no resemblance to anything in the natural world. As the night unfolded, the Smiths found themselves trapped in a chilling nightmare, a nocturnal intrusion into a world where the cursed campground came alive with malevolent forces. The entity drew nearer, its intentions unknown but undeniably sinister. Their camping vacation, once a quest for respite, had transformed into a desperate struggle for survival. The ancient curse of whispering pines had awakened, and it hungered for their souls. Its presence manifesting in the eerie shadows and the haunting whispers of the enchanted woods. Thanks for listening. If you like the story, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to your comments. See you in the next video.